live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco, California. It's The Cube at AWS Summit 2015. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching theCUBE live in San Francisco. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals and noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm with uh, Mark Farley, a distinguished guest, uh, author, blogger, evangelist, expert guru, and Nathan Pierce with F5 Technical, uh, Senior Technical Marketing Manager, Director. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, nice to be here. Okay, great to uh, have you on. So uh, what's going on with F5? Okay, you guys have obviously big play in networking. Um, the box business has been around for a while, but been making some moves here. Um, all in on Amazon. What's the story with that? With Amazon, you guys are you guys all in, or what's or a little bit in? <laughs> we we are all in. All our functions and services are available via the the Amazon marketplace. And uh, the, the driver, what's kind of taken us there, is this this push for business agility. You know, faster business. Um, and that's, like you said, boxes. You know, we've been making them for a long time. Definitely, but we're actually a software company that also makes hardware yeah. for those higher scaling kind of situations. And, and our customers have been looking to, to take advantage of cloud and these utility models, uh, utility models for, for quite some time. But they're wanting to take that, that policy they defined on their F5 equipment to make sure their applications are always fast, highly available and secure. They wanted to bring that to cloud with them. So, so being available via uh, Amazon's marketplace, we're able to address that for our customers. And how does that work in the marketplace? Explain to the folks out there because at reInvent this became apparent to a lot of the people saying, hey, this is cool, people want to buy that way. How does it work and what do you guys, how, does it, how do I engage with you as a customer on, on marketplace? Sure, so on the marketplace they can go directly on there and, and, and select a big IP platform and actually purchase it, they, they can bring their own license or use utility licensing. So they can even have F5 services um, hourly or, or, or annually if they like. Um, for however, you know, whatever time frame that they actually require it. But it's all bought directly through the, um, through the marketplace. So it's very easy uh, for them to uptake and it's the same software and platform, which is important. So the, the people that have been using us for years to, to keep everything running, there's, there's no new learning curve. Once they log in, it's the same administration. Um, it, it's all very familiar for them. So they can bring that same ratified policy from their private data center into uh, Amazon, into AWS. So what's your take on the whole cloud discussion here? Jassy laid out essentially a platform that's awesome, a lot of goodness coming from Amazon. Um, for an average enterprise who wants to go to the cloud, the network's a big deal. I mean, it's like a lot of stuff going on in the network layer. What's that bridge between the DevOps network application piece? Because applications are driving a lot of the, the conversation and, 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 the, and dictating policy, if you will. Definitely, and there's a lot of overlap now between the application architect and the network architect because, I mean, historically, you know, in, in, in private, more rigid uh, data centers, people would architect a network and that would be it. It was just connectivity. There were little services in there providing uh, extra value and then the application architects would be in their own, you know, siloed area that was quite a clinical lab environment developing their applications until it was ready to go live. It was effectively thrown over the fence to the network and often they'd point at each other over who the performance blame was um, for accessing it. So, so now with more agile business, faster business, more um, quicker code development cycles, you know, we've got continuous development that's being thrown out by a lot of the, the uh, development and DevOps orchestration kind of systems that the network has to be just as agile, just as flexible. It needs to react, you know, daily. We, I was talking to an organization uh, a few minutes ago that's done 12 releases of their product this year already. So we can't have this total separation and isolation. The network needs to own some of that agility that's coming from the, from the business. As, as do the application guys, they need to appreciate that the network needs to be aware of state from the application. You know, what's the analytics? How's it performing? How should that affect the way the network works to ensure that you know, there's this symbiosis between the two of we're both there to deliver an app. Uh, and to create a cu happy customer. So, so there's overlap coming between, the, between them, which I think is great. So, so what has this done to your own, uh, uh, your own application uh, development cycle? Uh, has that changed in response to this? Or? So we, we've all, always been a very API-focused mm -hmm. organization. So we've got a CLI, and we've got a GUI mm -hmm. for our application delivery um, platform. However, we, we, 
made sure that all of that rich functionality for, for performance, availability, and security would be available via the API as well. So that the application developer can be sitting there and rolling an application out and say, you know what, I, I could do some things better to optimize this. The app itself can make a call to their F5 uh, platform and, and it can use its application services, its app fluency, to make it run faster. So, so we always have that, that philosophy of, you know, make it exposable by an API um, so that we can keep up with the app development cycles. Yeah, Nathan, actually what I was, what I was getting to is, is uh, this, this transition to uh, being a cloud entity and, and, and a cloud business model. And, yep. uh, what, has that had any impact on, on the software development cycles that you have internally? How has that changed? So, because our software is the same, whether it runs on our hardware platform or whether it's uh, an instance, an image running out of mm -hmm. Amazon's marketplace, it's actually the same. It's the okay. same code maintained across both of them. So we, we continue the same philosophy as before, working very close with our customers and our technology alliance partners to ensure that we're addressing the, the, the key apps and services they need. Um, but yeah, the, the difference is the same from our perspective of what we deliver. Okay. Uh, has, has the partnership model changed at all as a result of this? Obviously, having Amazon as a partner is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, utility model's obviously a big part yeah. of that. You, yeah. you can't just roll out onto a cloud platform and tell them that they have to buy uh, a, a license that they're stuck with for life. I mean, it, yeah. it just doesn't work that way. Business agility, you know, and, and people are rolling apps out that, that only exist in the cloud for, for six months. It might be in a de development platform, and then they pull it back in-house afterwards. So, so that was a big change, obviously, bringing in these utility models, these cloud license programs. So, so that's, that's had a huge impact on the way we engage with customers. But also being available in the Amazon marketplace has just opened another route to customers as well. Mm. I mean, they can self-serve. They can come to Amazon and actually use F5 services to be as secure and available as, uh, as the traditional customers. Yeah, it's base. a whole other uh, topic. I, don't, I yeah. don't know that we'll go down there with the idea of the channel, and the Amazon store being a channel. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. A, it's a really interesting one. It's a real change, yeah. 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 So what's going on with you guys as a company? Give us the update on, you mentioned a software company. What's the big, big thing here at Amazon? What's going on around F5 for the folks that aren't up to speed on what's happening with F5? So look, our customers are really happy that we're on uh, Amazon's platform because they've, they've been using F5 for a long time. I mean, we've, our traditional customers been the global 2000 sort of organizations. They, they've been asking, when are we going to be there on, on Amazon? So we can take our, our tier one uh, applications out to that platform. So, so for us, it's, it's been excellent. I mean, our customers are, are really happy about this, that they can take this tested, proven policy that they've been ratifying and working with us to develop, and they can just move that policy with their app onto Amazon. So it's, it's common, it's easy to support, it's not a new tool set. It's, it's just giving them an extension of capability in a utility model. So yeah, it's, it's exciting times. I mean, it's changed, it has changed the way we look at the market, but um, you know, we're keeping up with the customer demands and expectations though. What's the customer's perception of the cloud? I have to get there someday, oh no, drag my feet. Yeah. Uh, seriously, what are you, what's your vibe? You do a lot of traveling, what's the sentiment? Yeah, there's, there's definitely, each theater's got a different approach. I mean, you take Australia, where I'm from, it's been a while since I was out there, but but it's huge uptake out there uh, for AWS. And, and they've gone an extra step where they've got financial organizations that have actually ratified cloud where they can put financial data. And yet some of the other regions haven't done that. So it's, it's not a global kind of blanket, everyone's ticked it off and it's fine. We see little pockets of, you know, this little Nordic country has gone right, all in, government's ratified it, go. And then another region's kind of, I don't share my storage with anyone. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We're still, it's yeah, a we're cultural still thing, right? I mean, depends on exactly. where you are in, in the world. Exactly. L last time I was up in Scotland, I met a, a provider that hosted totally isolated environments. So that's back to just managed services oh. models, which was mm -hmm. happening years ago because of organizations that won't share. But I think over time, we're going to see that model change. Um, I, I think there's just some people that are, are taking a little while. They want to see if there's any epic failure in the media before yeah. they go, <laughs> okay, it's good for me. And there's always going to be a few people like that. But but you know, I, I see it as hugely positive, yeah. um, and, and I think it's a great solution. And what do you think that the old incumbent winners from the past decades need to do to be successful in this new era? So you know, and anyone who doesn't match the kind of utility models, you know, in, in the way that they're billing and addressing their customer base, I think is really going to struggle. Anyone who's used to the idea of 
you know, like like this, this tangible object, like a cup of water. I can sell that to you, and it's, it's still just a cup of water. That doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> and there's your, there's your cup of water. Now we've got we've, we've got applications. This this term I keep hearing around from development people about um, this phenomenon of spin and kill services. So a, an entire app or service that have a lifetime that could be an hour or two, just to do a demand spin a and campaign. Kill. Spin and spin kill. It up. Spin kill it up, it. and then literally hours later, kill it, yeah. gone. If you don't have a licensing module or a route to market that matches and that. And people who have the mindset of killing and spinning. And the DevOps type people yeah. that can handle that mindset, yeah. then you're not going to make it in today's market. Business agility is really, really pushing all of these things. And I think it's really exciting. We've got something fun to talk about again. So talk yeah. about DevOps, um, child. Okay, yeah, No, no, let's talk about that. You know, like, uh, the move to containers, Docker, all of this stuff. Yeah. What are you seeing? Are, are, when, you, when you talk to customers, are, are they talking to you about containers? What they want to do with them, and how does that impact how you'll uh, how you'll provide services for application delivery? Sure. So, and containerization, I think, is what's really driven this spin and kill kind of phenomenon, where you know the, the the speed at which they can actually throw out a new platform and a stack on top of it is, is amazing. But for that to really work, you can't just have that in your server tier. The entire data center needs to be able to handle that spin and kill um, scenario. So, you know, if I suddenly spin up. 30 containers to just address a short need. Maybe it was a launch that we know is just going to get hit. Uh, a, a video clip streams out and it's just that short amount of time. Well, the whole network in front, the security services, the identity services, they equally need to make that jump and be able to jump back after. How do you deal with that? APIs. <laughs> you do not want people managing that change at keyboards. I mean, one, just the amount of people it takes to do that, but two, Points of failure. Keyboard is where a lot of risk happens. You know, we ask our customers all the time, the outages, what are they typically? You know, power failures, whatever. They openly admit, actually, it's often at the keyboard. The protein robot. Yeah, you don't maybe copy something to, your, to standby data center or, or you miss a step like that, there's your outage. So if we can, through APIs, automate and orchestrate the flow of how we execute these things, that's how we're going to get there and solve these problems. So what's coming up for RSA? Last question before we break. RSA is coming up. What's the big security hot button that you guys are focused on? Obviously, app delivery, security, networking. You guys are a big part of that, I'm sure software. So what's the story for RSA? What's coming up? What do you see as the big top line theme for RSA in terms of security in this area? Sure, so security is, again, it's a problem for security people having to evolve as quick as these rapid changing data centers. I mean, how do you keep your security posture as, as with parity with, with these services that come and go, you know, in hours, you know, in the days. So, so that's going to be a tough thing for them to address. And a lot of it's skills and expertise within the organization. We've moved beyond just data center firewalls that say, you know, allow port 80 or not allow it. We've now got um, application security. And that's where data theft happens in the application cross-site request forgery, SQL injection, that'll happen straight through network firewalls. So, yeah, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of push now up the stack, you know, people have to be very busy within HTTP, HTML, these kind of protocols, that's where the data's getting stolen from. So, so I'm, I'm hoping we see a lot more of following that trend, it's something so we've been on for a long the time. The perimeter, does it exist anymore? Or the, um, it's per perimeterless security, right, I mean? Yeah, I mean, now the app, half the processing's happening out in the browsers, so where's the edge? of that application experience. Yeah, it's insane, it's, right? It's everywhere within that session and every device it traverses. So a whole new paradigm needs to be created for security. It is, it is, yeah. So currently is broken. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. what we want to hear. <laughs> Welcome to the party, people. It's broken, <laughs> security is effed up. But <laughs> Amazon's got some great stuff. Yeah, um, and, that, and yeah. our application security, same things, all available through the Amazon Marketplace as well, so, yeah. I'm sure Jassy and team railroaded CloudTrail, to the table really quickly. That yep. stuff's really critical. You got to have the compliance. Yeah. You got to have the tracking and everything in there. Definitely, visibility is really yeah. huge. Yeah, well, security's you know, kind of, no one wants to say it, but it's pretty broken. So uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to hear what's going on with you guys at the RSA. This is the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm John Furrier, Mark Farley, here live in San Francisco for Amazon Web Services Summit. This is the Cube. We'll be right back. <laughs>